right, so I am going to, uh, to Matt Cyrus, I thankfully, after watching all of this today, don't actually do any cosmetics. So I don't inject anything into anybody ever. Uh, I even get nervous during a punch biopsy at this point in my career. Uh, <laughs> But so I do get really interested in stuff like this, right? So does it harm coral when we wear sunscreen? So at some point, a patient's going to come in and ask you this. I'm going on vacation, blah, blah, blah. I care about the environment, my kids, polar bears, sea turtles. Can I wear sunscreen, right? I don't wear I, I shouldn't wear it, right? Well, you, you got to be able to answer that question for them, right? So no disclosures relevant to this. But this jumps me to one of my favorite pet peeve topics that I deal with a lot as a contact dermatitis person. I get patients coming in all the time asking me about what about this ingredient products and this ingredient and that ingredient and I went sulfate free and my shampoo is paraben free and it's gluten free and it's, you know, great. Okay, so but where do people get all of this, right? They get it from social media. So everyday products that you've got dangerous chemicals, right? So bisphenol A in your water bottles, uh, dioxin, mercury, Fluorinated compounds, atrazine, right? So all of this stuff, there's nothing you can do, right, at this point that is not poisoning yourself, right? According, according to social media and the internet, being in this room right now, you're going to die, right? <laughs> there is, there's toxin in the air, in the seats, in everything, right? So how, how do you live if you're dealing with this, right? So but the, the other question is, what's the worst chemical that in a real sense we all deal with every day? Right, so DHMO, right? Who, who here is, is familiar with DHMO, right? So DHMO uh, is dihydrogen monoxide, right? So dihydrogen monoxide, more deaths than any other chemical. Can, cancer cells cannot replicate or metastasize, especially toxic to respiratory tissues, fracking, nuclear power industries, all municipal water supplies have it, and it's impossible to eliminate from the environment. So what is this horrible chemical and they did this, this has been on the internet, hundreds of thousands of people have signed a petition, a petition to ban, that the government should ban this chemical uh, from all products used on children. And of course, dihydrogen oxide uh, is water, <coughs> right? So that's how they make everything sound horrible, is because if you selectively pick the data, you can do that. So real chemical risk assessment, it's impossible to produce solid evidence uh, of minute harm, right? That's one of the problems. Uh, it, it's also impossible to prove that something is not harmful uh, at minute levels and in minute ways over long periods of time, right? So the only rationale is to ignore everything, but so cor which is what I do, right? I, I don't pay any attention to any of this stuff, but coral, right? Now, coral is a lot easier to check. So some fifth grade science, coral is an animal. Only some make those hard shells. They get their energy from these symbiotic little bacteria that live inside them. Uh, those things die, and then it turns white, and they're obviously a huge part of the, of the ecosystem in the oceans. For growth and reproduction, their colonies grow by either cell division, budding, which is when a little cell comes off of a big one, not when a big one splits into two, uh, or they release sperm and egg into the air and they find each other, or into the water, they find each other, right? So whenever you're swimming nor near a coral reef, just remember that you're swimming in coral sperm uh, <laughs> as, you're, as you're checking out the reef, all right? So can benzophenone 3 harm coral? So my general bias whenever I start anything like this is no, right? This stuff is not, harm, is not harmful, right? So but you look at this study, control 22.8 parts per billion go, going up to higher levels. It clearly affects uh, these unicellular organisms of the coral, right? So in its clear dose-response relationship, so at low doses, right, 22.8 micrograms per liter, that's on the parts per billion uh, scale, right? So all of these ways that they looked at benzophenone 3 and coral, it hurts coral, right? But uh, it does hurt coral. Plutonium could harm panda bears, right? That doesn't mean that it's actually harming the panda bears because they're not exposed to enough of the plutonium to cause any damage, right? So what we need to know, is there enough benzophenone 3 in the water, right? The ocean's pretty big, so whenever we swim in there, does enough sunscreen come off of our body to actually harm the coral, right? So, and what's it coming from? Is it coming from the sunscreen or is it coming from water that's draining? You know, we wash it off in the shower and it goes through the pipes and into the ocean, 
All right, so this was a study done in the US Virgin Islands. So this is the whole island. We're then gonna look at that little square with the three dots. This little square has three different bays in it, right? So Keneo Bay, the one on the lower left, they watched it, 17 swimmers in 48 hours, no benzophenone was detected. They then looked at this Hawks Nest Bay. So 230 swimmers over the course of a day, samples were taken around 5 p.m. Uh, and they found between 75 and 95 micrograms per liter. If, if you remember the earlier slide, at about 20 micrograms per liter, you started to get damage to the coral. And at Trunk Bay, uh, which was a much more popular one, 2,000 visitors per day, uh, they found 1,300 parts per billion, right? So more, way more than enough to really significantly harm the coral. Uh, and because we can see in this one near little area, it, it varied over the course of the day, depending on the number of swimmers. So it's primarily coming from the swimmers, okay? So, what do we know? When the conditions are met, yes, there's definitely enough benzophenone 3 that can get into the water to, to kill the coral. Got to be lots of swimmers, got to be bays and coves. So what do we do, right? The obvious thing, okay, stay out of the water. No, we're not going to do that, right? We're not going to stop going to the beach, damn the coral, all right? Wear sunscreen, right? Don't wear sunscreen, okay? Meh. Even I agree that it may be worthwhile to occasionally put sunscreen on when you go to the beach. <laughs> right, we'll, we'll, I'll talk a little bit more about that in a minute. All right, wear physical blockers, though, right? That's the obvious thing, titanium and zinc. However, the titanium and zinc hurt the coral, right? So titanium hurts the coral a little bit, right? Doesn't hurt it a lot, but hurts it a little bit, right? So just a tiny bit, maybe. And so if you care about the coral, right? So polar bears, and so it's all gonna die without coral. So if you care about the polar bears and the sea turtles, you should be doing this. Stick to wearing sunscreen that only has zinc and titanium as an active ingredient. So summary, adequate concentrations, yes. Titanium and zinc don't hurt the coral much because they're already in the seawater. The coral has a way to deal with it, right? So if this ever comes up with a patient, tell them you're fine to wear titanium and zinc. Don't wear anything that has the organic sunscreens in it. That's it. <laughs>